Studying the Earth itself has revealed a lot about the processes that shape the universe and other rocky planets, but we are still learning about our home planet. A new study this week reveals that near the core of the planet, there are chemical leftovers from the processes that shaped the early planet Earth. In this video, we take a journey into the depths of the Earth, down through the crust and mantle nearly to the core, and see how seismic waves reveal the secrets of the planet. I am Mohana Basu, and this is Pure Science. Seismic waves echo through the planet following an earthquake and help reveal its internal structure, just like radar waves. Such studies have been used often to understand the structure of the Earth. Down near the core, there are zones where seismic waves slow down to a crawl. New research from the University of Utah finds that these ultra-low velocity zones consist of several layers. Modeling suggests that it is possible some of these zones are leftovers from the processes that shaped the early Earth, remnants of incomplete mixing like clumps of flour in a bowl of batter. According to the team, these ultra-low velocity zones are probably the most extreme features found anywhere in the planet. The interior of the Earth is broadly categorized into several layers. Humans live on the crust, a thin layer of solid rock. Between the crust and the iron-nickel core, the center of the planet is the mantle. The mantle is not an ocean of lava. Instead, it's more like solid rock but hot and with the ability to move that drives plate tectonics at the surface. But how do we know what is under the crust when the deepest hole ever dug on Earth has only reached about half the distance to the mantle after 20 years of digging? As seismic waves ripple through the Earth after an earthquake, scientists on the surface can measure how and when the waves arrive at monitoring stations around the world. From those measurements, they can calculate how the waves were reflected and deflected by structures within the Earth, including layers of different densities. That's how we know where the boundaries are between the crust, mantle and core, and partially how we know what they are made of. Ultra-low velocity zones sit at the bottom of the mantle on top of the liquid metal outer core. In these areas, seismic waves slow by as much as half and density goes up by a third. Scientists initially thought that these zones were areas where the mantle was partially melted and might be the source of magma for volcanic regions. But research has shown that most ultra-low velocity zones don't appear to be located beneath the hotspot volcanoes. So the team set out to explore an alternate hypothesis, that the ultra-low velocity zones may be regions made of different rocks than the rest of the mantle and that their composition may reveal secrets of the early Earth. Ultra-low velocity zones could be collections of iron oxide. Such pockets of iron oxide just outside the core might influence the Earth's magnetic field, which is generated just below. The physical properties of ultra-low velocity zones are linked to their origin, which in turn provides important information about the thermal and chemical status, evolution and dynamics of the Earth's lowermost mantle, an essential part of mantle convection that drives plate tectonics. To get a clear picture, the researchers studied the ultra-low velocity zones beneath the Coral Sea between Australia and New Zealand. It's an ideal location because of the abundance of earthquakes in the area, which provide a high-resolution seismic picture of the core mantle boundary. The hope was that high-resolution observations could reveal more about the ultra-low velocity zones are put together. But getting a seismic image of the mantle is not always conclusive. A thick layer of low-velocity material might reflect seismic waves the same way as a thin layer of even lower-velocity material. So the team used a reverse engineering approach. They created a model of the Earth that includes ultra-low wave speed reductions and then run a computer simulation that models what the seismic waveforms would look like if that is what the Earth actually looked like. This next step is to compare those predicted recordings with the recordings that they actually have. Over hundreds of thousands of model runs, the method yields a mathematically robust model of the interior with a good understanding of the uncertainties and trade-offs of different assumptions in the model. 
One particular question that the researchers wanted to answer is whether there are internal structures such as layers within ultra low velocity zones. The answer according to the model is that layers are highly likely. This is the first study to demonstrate strong layering within the ultra low velocity zone. So what does this finding mean? More than 4 billion years ago, while dense iron was sinking to the core of the early earth and lighter minerals were floating up into the mantle, a planetary object about the size of Mars may have slammed into the infant planet. The collision may have thrown debris into the Earth's orbit that could have later formed the Moon. It also raised the temperature of the Earth significantly. As a result, a large body of molten material known as the magma ocean formed. The ocean would have consisted of rock, gases and crystals suspended in the magma. The ocean would have sorted itself out as it cooled with dense materials sinking and layering onto the bottom of the mantle. Over the following millions of years, as the mantle churned and convected, the dense layer would have been pushed into small patches, showing up as the layered ultra-low velocity zones we see today. So the primary and most surprising finding is that the ultra-low velocity zones are not homogeneous, but contain strong variations within them. These variations can be explained by the processes that were created at the very beginning of the Earth's history and that they are still not well mixed after 4.5 billion years of the mantle swirling. The study provides some evidence of the origins of some ultra-low velocity zones, although there's also evidence to suggest different origins for others, such as melting of ocean crust that's sinking back into the mantle. However, if at least some of the ultra-low velocity zones have leftovers from early Earth, they preserve the history of the planet that would have otherwise been lost. The discovery provides a tool to understand the initial thermal and chemical status of the Earth's mantle and its long-term evolution. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.